This program has been made possible by a generous grant from the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Sport Fish and Wildlife Restoration Program, conserving our fish, wildlife, plants, and their habitats for all Vermonters to enjoy. Next on Outdoor Journal, uh, we get a lesson on wing shooting at Orbis, one of the premier shooting schools in the country. Then we explore the Turner Hill Wildlife Management Area, a property rich in habitat diversity as well as local history. We also spend a day with three way station captains during the LCI Father's Day Derby, where an angler's success is often weighed in with quality family time. Breaking clay targets has to be the most satisfying shooting sport, but it can also be one of the most frustrating. Wing shooting requires good hand-eye coordination, the proper form, and lots of practice. And just like swinging a golf club or hitting a baseball, good coaching can be a great help. Thanks to the instructors at Orvis, the wing shooting skills of countless target shooters and bird hunters have been greatly improved since 1973 when Orvis opened its wing shooting school in Manchester, Vermont. Bird, your way, your way. Wing shooting is great fun, but it's probably the hardest shooting sport to master. Nice shot. It requires good hand-eye coordination and learning the proper form. Whether you're duck hunting or pursuing upland game birds or simply shooting clay pigeons, the difference between hitting and missing a target often comes down to practice and mastering the fundamentals. Excellent. And all right. Focus. Great shot. And nice timing on that, too. Really nice. All right, let's go around. The fundamentals are exactly what the instructors at the Orvis Wing Shooting School work on with their students. They include a good stance, a good gun mount, and good target acquisition. If a shooter tucks and crouches a little bit too much, as those shoulders kind of roll in, the head drops, we wind up with a jawbone that's pushed out in an unnatural sort of posture. Bruce Bolin is the head shooting instructor and author of the Orvis Wing Shooting Handbook. The approach taught at the school and in his book is often called the instinctive technique. It's a method imported from England that was developed by wing shooting expert Robert Churchill. Churchill's real contribution, he recognized shotgunning as a distinct activity with a form and style of its own. And to my way of thinking, shotgunning has many more parallels with what I would describe as the other eye-hand sports, i.e. golf, tennis, baseball, billiards, anything you played as a kid. And at the core of all of those eye-hand sports is what every coach yelled at every one of us, Lawrence. Keep your eye on the ball. And that's one of the big hurdles we all have as shotgunners. We have a natural predisposition to want to peek at the gun, to see where the gun is before pulling the trigger. Right, that's so we're going to think less about outcome and more about process. The shooter who gets focused on, oh man, I don't want to miss this. That's the shooter who will tend to hold back and try to aim a little too much. They're trying to over-engineer a little bit. So we're going to be a little more spontaneous. We're going to trust our eye just a little more. The mechanics of our activity are relatively simple. We've got to learn to bring the gun smoothly to cheek and shoulder and maintain focus on the target. Get those two done, pull the trigger, and you're going to hit an awful lot of birds. Focus, hit them. Not bad. Hit or miss, Bruce and his colleagues are always positive. Individuals and groups from across the country travel to Manchester based on the reputation of the Orvis School and its expert instructors. Orvis offers two-day and single-day classes that are designed to turn novices into skilled shooters and experienced shooters into experts. Instructors are very, very patient and obviously knowledgeable and being able to tweak the things that are, are individual to you, I think is uh, paramount and uh, they've been great so far. 
Every student that passes through the school is measured for a proper shotgun fit. These measurements are designed for new gun purchases, but they can also be used to tweak the fit of existing guns. If the gun is comfortable and you have confidence in it, that's certainly a big part of the whole formula. It doesn't have to be down to the last millimeter in terms of fit, but we just need something that uh, is going to put your eye into a natural harmony with the line of the barrel. For every bit of coaching, there's a whole lot of actual shooting. Hit him, just like that. Nice shot. Well, I think what's missed by folks who don't take a formal class is uh, there, there seems to be a general comprehension that a shotgun, a shooting pellets, it doesn't require any skill. But a bird that's flying at 40, 50 miles an hour, in several directions maybe, there is a lot of skill involved and you need to be able to orchestrate the gun mount, the swing, the, uh, the cheek meld, the, the, uh, uh, all of the aspects that Orbis teaches. Now. All the way up, shoulder, cheek. Beautiful, 70, that's perfect. Focus on the target. Bird, see those shadows. You can't hit it with a 410 any better than that. Formal My wife, line. Stephanie, and I spent a day with Bruce at Orvis's wing shooting grounds. Although we have different levels of skill and experience, it was beneficial for both of us. It's the instructor's job to try to continually challenge them at whatever level they're at. Uh, if we have brand new shooters, we uh, try to give them targets that they can be successful with. If they're more experienced shooters, uh, then we up the ante a little bit and try to continually challenge them. But always maintain that confidence. Bird! Focus. Nice. That target was a lot faster. It was. Dick is. That was an after uh, burner grouse right there. <laughs> That's the most sincere compliment you'll receive. When Dick starts mixing 90 millimeter targets into your oh, program. Oh, used a mini or a midi. Midi. Because that it, target took off. It, it caught did. me by surprise. They're a great target. And what it does, it gives you a little change of pace. Yeah, you know, woodcock yeah. and grouse don't yeah, play at the same speed. It was a lot speed. faster. So, All right. But only with the good shots that we do that, Lord. <laughs> so let's move across. What I enjoyed most about working with Bruce is the many small but important tips that made me a better and more consistent shooter. Don't be satisfied with a global focus identifying just an orange blob, but we're going to look to try to see these little ridges and the shadows created by each one of those little ridges. Move that left hand out about one more inch. That would be perfect. Now, look for those details on the target. All right. Lawrence, that looks great. Ready. All right. Focus. Hit him. Bruce whispers the word focus before almost every shot. He is convinced that most misses are caused by a lack of focus on the target or a change in focus during the shot. If I were asking you to tell me what time it is and I was moving my watch, it's annoying. Your instinct is to reach out, hold my hand still so that you can tell me what time it is. And we have that same instinct as we refocus on the end of the gun. Stopping the swing uh, is something I think we all understand we don't want to do but I don't think most shooters understand why they stop their swing. I am more and more convinced that it is the refocus on the end of the gun that interrupts the flow of the gun. If a shooter can maintain focus on the target, their swing will almost never stop. Bird, focus, hit him. Well, that looked pretty decisive to me. <laughs> and you let it get out a little bit also. Great job, take a break on that. Whether you attend the shooting school with friends and family or join a group of strangers, the Orbis instructors make the experience fun and challenging for everyone. And you don't have to be a big tough guy. In fact, almost every year the school sees an increase in female shooters. Women come at it with a much more open mind, are willing to listen and try to follow, and are some of the easiest, most coachable students. There's no great physical strength required. It is certainly a place where women can uh, shine and, uh, and many times outshoot their husbands or uh, boyfriends. Bird, see those shadows. The lady can't miss. Outstanding. Bird. Nice pair. He didn't tell me there was three. <laughs> Dick doesn't tell me everything. <laughs> 
Again, that's a compliment. It's an excellent school. It's world renowned. The staff are exceptional. They're patient, which is important. And I certainly would recommend that if somebody wants to get into the shooting sports, a formal class early will save a lot of frustration. And if you're a man trying to teach your wife, or if you're a woman trying to teach your husband, I would say, let somebody else do it. And he'll probably save the relationship. No. This is my 40th year of peeking over people's shoulders, and it's my impression that striving for too much precision is one of the real issues for many shotgunners. My son has a toolbox, and on the inside of the lid, as you open it up, he has written, don't allow perfection to become the enemy of good. And that is so true of wing shooting. If we strive for too much perfection, we wind up focusing on the gun, not on the target. So I say to my students, you need a good focus and a good gun mount, and that's all you need. Confidence in those two is at the core of good wing shooting. All right, shoot the front edge. Just like that, great shot. When I first came here, it was a really odd property, kind of a mix of all different habitat types. And I didn't know how to categorize it, but then it grew on me and it was like, wow, this is a really incredible place just because of that diversity that's here. The wetlands, the uplands, the, the lack of steep topography and not many people. Located in Southeastern Vermont, the 595 acre Turner Hill Wildlife Management Area is on the Athens Dome upland in the town of Athens and Grafton. It was acquired in 2012 and is one of Vermont's newest WMAs. The Turner Hill WMA sits on this relatively high flat plateau. We sit at about 1,700 feet up here and it goes for hundreds if not thousands of acres of relatively flat ground. There's old logging roads that allow people to use access for the WMA but there are no roads that cut across any of this land up here, so it is really remote up here. This place is kind of unique in southeastern Vermont in that it does have a lot of attributes associated with the northern portion of the state. And the locals who brought us into this project call this place the Northeast Kingdom of southeastern Vermont. Like the Northeast Kingdom, Turner Hill features spruce and fir trees mixed in with a variety of hardwoods. But what really stands out are its many wetlands, which is unusual for southeastern Vermont. This property is rich with beavers and wetlands. You can't go more than 500 feet without hitting another huge complex. And those wetlands provide ideal habitat for a whole host of other species that the department cares about and is excited about protecting. These wetlands are used by a variety of wildlife, from moose to wood ducks and other waterfowl. The wetlands and the many nut-producing beech and oak trees on the WMA also help support a healthy bear population. But one of the driving forces behind the protection of this property was the discovery of a very rare plant. The northeastern bulrush is a federally endangered species. It's found in Pennsylvania and a few places in Massachusetts and New Hampshire, and then in these lower elevation beaver wetlands in Vermont. And as you know, uh, beavers and humans don't often g get along very well. And so here on the Athens Dome, there are no people, and so beavers can come and go as they like, and the plant can also come and go. What happens is it grows in the mud at the bottom of the pond when the beavers go away. And when the beavers come back and flood the pond, the seeds drop down to the bottom of the pond and they're held there for many years until the beavers leave and it dries up. Turner Hill not only features a rich diversity of wildlife and habitats, it's also rich in history. Alex Turner and his wife Sally were escaped slaves who settled in Grafton after the Civil War. On the property, we have not only the foundations that were the Turner family house where he raised his children, but we have actually a house that's still standing where his children lived. Daisy Turner, one of 13 children raised by Alex and Sally, lived to be 104 years old and was well known in the community. 
The Vermont Folklife Center recorded an oral history with Daisy, and now an effort is being made to preserve the home she once lived in. There's a lot of great scenes of her sitting on this porch of this house and telling the story about her family's history and how they made it to Vermont. There's tons of great stories that go along with the hardships of farming up here at this elevation, as well as how her father was accepted in Grafton, how he got his land, all of these different things. And we've been excited to partner with the Vermont Preservation Trust and the State Historic Preservation Office in order to find a way to see that house permanently protected and restored. Thanks to a partnership between the Vermont Nature Conservancy, the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department, and other organizations and individuals, this property will be available for history and wildlife enthusiasts to enjoy forever. Lake Champlain International, or LCI, hosts several fishing derbies every year. It's one of the many ways that this nonprofit organization educates and advocates for a cleaner, healthier lake. All of their events are very well attended, but none are as big as the Father's Day Fishing Derby held in June. 10.17. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Nice northern man. He felt the hook, then he just flew up in the air and got, got hooked on it. Wow. Jumped right out of the water a couple times, didn't he? Yeah. That's, that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It was like... <laughs> yeah. This uh, derby means a lot to our family. It's a family tradition. We do it year after year. I think I've only missed one or two. And you know, the nice thing about the LCI is for everybody. Anybody can come here and catch fish and uh, have a good time and be on a lake. The derby kicks off at midnight, the Friday of Father's Day weekend. And for the next three days, the lake is dotted with anglers hoping to hook into a winning fish. The Derby itself started in 1982, primarily an event to call people's attention to the issues around the lake, create awareness and hopefully affect some change and to bring people together for an event. Uh, the event now draws people from 30 plus states, 35 states around the nation, 6,000 people. And for us, it's our primary fundraiser for ensuring a swimmable, drinkable, fishable Lake Champlain. All right, you bass guys, we need your registrations, both a catcher and a witness. Upwards of 80 volunteers make the derby possible, and many of the volunteers have been hooked since the very beginning. Well, I started working for LCI doing way station captaining, we think about 27 or 28 years ago. Uh, we've kind of lost count, but it was the second or third year of the, of the derby, and it's been a lot of fun over the years. 26.5, Dad. Lake trout. Yep. Don's sons, Jake and Harrison, have been helping out at the Apple Island Way Station since they were old enough to walk. The Tobies have been regulars at the South Hero Way Station and have gotten to know many of the locals. These are the halls. Uh, yeah. They've been fishing in the derby for as long as, as long it's been started, started, I guess. Yeah. Well, I see the same people year after year coming to the way station and they don't even always catch fish. They just come to chat and look at the results and come to the lottery or buy a t-shirt and I've gotten to know people from all over New England and people from all over the United States really and, and occasionally we even have folks that are from Germany and uh, Europe. Uh, it's really pretty interesting. The Derby has 12 way stations scattered on both sides of the lake and if you want to see what folks are catching, the way stations are the place to be. I'm open. You want to want me to put it right in the camera? <laughs> Most stations see a steady stream of fish from the time they open at 9 a.m. to when they close at 6 p.m. But there are a few stations that have even longer hours. We have three 24-hour stations. One's Chipman Point, Point Bay Marina. The other one's up in Plattsburgh, New York. So that's why we have the camper right here, because basically we have to be here the whole duration of the Derby. It's a beautiful setting down here, Point Bay Marina and we enjoy watching the families come in. We really like to watch the kids coming in. They're jumping up and down all wide-eyed, really happy to be there and all excited about the fish. And in some cases, the parents are more excited than the kids are. He's gonna catch a bigger one, we're going back out. We get generations in here 
we get kids coming in, six years old. We get grandparents coming in. We got a guy come in just a minute ago, told me he was 82 years old and was fishing. So it really brings out all generations and connects families. And I think that's one of the big draws of this tournament is it's not just about the fish, it's also about the family interaction. Oh, it's more than fishing, absolutely. You know, I get to spend time with my father, my brother. Uh, my brother showed up last night from South Carolina as a surprise. We're gonna pick up uh, his daughter and it's a good time. If we catch some fish, that's just a bonus. It's a family get together like a Thanksgiving dinner. I mean, uh, the generation's gotten a little bit older so that we can explore a little bit more with them and uh, they're getting to be young men and they realize it. What's the going rate for a, a therapist per hour? I don't right? know. I don't know. Probably hundred. a lot more. And we get a lot of family therapy knocked out of the way in three days than probably people spend years at. You know, I forgive him for everything he did to me. <laughs> and I forgive him uh, for everything Hopefully they forgive me, me, you know. Yeah, it's fun. Anglers aren't the only people that look forward to the Derby. For local businesses, the Derby is seen as a boost to summer business. It brings in millions of dollars this, this, to the local economy, both in New York and in Vermont. So this is a really important weekend for area merchants. Um, People spend a lot of money when they come on a trip like this. You know, you've got food, lodging, gas. It definitely helps out. Hold them right up. Throughout the day, we spent time at three different weigh stations and saw a wide variety of fish weighed in from anglers of all ages. You guys have a good day. Good luck. There are seven different categories that offer cash prizes with a minimum length listed for each species of fish. So far today, we've had a lot of fish get weighed in and the quality of the fish is exemplary. This is the sixth year that I've done weigh station captaining and what gets me into it is being part of the lamprey control program, being able to see the fruits of our labor and what comes in for the fish really makes a big difference to me. I enjoy seeing clean fish coming in, bigger fish and more fish. 28 and a half. Although hundreds of fish are caught over the weekend, very few are taken home. The LCI Derby stresses catch and release fishing, and, and uh, if you bring in your fish alive, you get a 5% point bonus. So it's, it's really worthwhile to bring in fish alive. And roughly 95% uh, of the fish get weighed in alive, and then we release them. And you know, some, some people think, oh, you've got 6,000 fishermen fishing in the Derby, you know, you're wiping out the fish. Well, most of them go back alive. He's a good clean fish. There ain't no real lamprey marks on him. He's got a couple of bruises here and there, probably from rocks. He's looking real healthy. Yep, he's a nice fish. And I believe he'll swim away with no trouble. We're pretty anxious to get back out on the lake. Seeing Wait all these fish come in, it's making us yeah. jonesing to yeah, go back out. Yeah, coming left and right. We thought we were the only ones, but. We were actually trolling for uh, lake trout and salmon and uh, got a bite, got the lines just set off and uh, we were surprised when we reeled them up that it was a big northern, nice yeah. northern, nine pounder. So it's definitely a lot of fun. Good chance to spend some time with friends and catch up and just have a good time. Three days of fishing, there's no, yep. nothing better. Good excuse so. <laughs> to fish for three days. Uh, we caught them in Shelburne Bay. Put up a nice bite. Uh, caught it on a Sanko dinger. Part of what we enjoy and part of we, what we know the majority of the people enjoy is the lucky factor. You basically need a fishing pole, a little bit of patience, and uh, a good attitude, and you'll be a happy angler. Winning fish are caught from shore, kayaks, and motorboats of all shapes and sizes. In fact, some of the best fish seen at the weigh stations are brought in on small 14-foot aluminum boats. That's money in the bank. My, my dad caught it. What a walleye. We had already fished down in McQuan's Bay, didn't get nothing, except a few bass, and we, he said, let's head down the creek. So I went there, and that's where I caught him. We were told for maybe eight minutes, 10 minutes. Yeah, we were just sitting there, just pulled, shoot, just shooting down. the bow, and all this and that pole just <laughs> And I could, we got something on there, I don't know what it is. But what a fight, and I loved it too, every bit of it, every ounce of it was, was just there, you know, it was it, it was my, my moment, I loved it. 28. The 28 inch, four and a half pound walleye landed Kenny top honors in the walleye division. The Derby awards over $150,000 worth of cash and prizes over the three day event. 
LCI staff members refer to winning fish as lightning strikes. But lightning isn't the only thing striking emotions at the Derby. The biggest smiles we see, the most enthusiasm, and sometimes tears or people literally jumping over their chairs, is when they get the trophy. You spend the money, uh, but you keep, you keep the trophy, you keep the memories, you have the photos. And I think that's probably what people are fishing for more, is fishing for those memories, the anticipation, the lightning strike, than they are fishing for the, the cash. For many of the people that fish in the Derby, it's a family event, you know, and it's, you know, Father's Day weekend, so, you know, fathers and their children are all out fishing and, and wives too, and it's not really all about winning something, it's about getting out there and having fun. It's hard to picture a better way to spend Father's Day than with your friends and your family fishing. For more information on this or any other Outdoor Journal segment, be sure to visit our website at vpt.org slash outdoor journal. Our site features video on demand as well as links to related sites. You can call, write, or email us. And as always, we look forward to your comments and suggestions.